SummerSlam 1993. This SummerSlam was the first pay-per-view in, in a new era for WWE, the WWF, as Hulk Hogan, the Ultimate Warrior, Ric Flair, and Sensational Sherry had all left. A new crop of talent needed to be pushed, and it all started with just one guy. One guy with a bus. The Lex, yes, Lex Luger, the former a NWA World Heavyweight Champion, being given a shot against Yokozuna. And Lex traveled all across the U.S. in a bus called the Lex Express to inspire Americans to rally behind him and get the belt back from the Japanese monster who was actually Samoan and get the title back into American hands. As such, this was... There was much anticipation for bleh, there was much anticip anticipation. Wow, I cannot speak at all for this match. But every good pay per view needs an undercard, and this one had some had a pretty good one. Had some had a good one. It's not the best, but it had a pretty good one. The night started off with Razor Ramon against Ted DiBiase. The story going the story going into this one was that Ted DiBiase had picked on Ramon and even offered offered him a job as a slave after his shocking loss to the 1-2-3 kid on Raw in July. Ramon angry, but Ramon angry had then teamed with the 1-2-3 kid against Money, Inc., the tag team of Ted DiBiase and the IRS men, or an R. Scheister. To settle their differences, they both were given one-on-one -on -one matches. Um, Ted DiBiase against... Razor Ramon at SummerSlam, and Erwin R. Scheister, the IRS man, against the 1-2-3 kid at SummerSlam. Um, Razor Ramon was able to settle his side of the deal after hitting the Razor's Edge on Ted DiBiase 1-2-3 in a pretty good matchup. Next up came the Steiner brothers putting their tag team titles on the line against the Heavenly Bodies. Um, despite the interference by the Bodies manager, James E. Cornette, who hit Scott Steiner in the throat with a tennis racket, they were able to pull out the win in a very decent matchup. Um, next up, Shawn Michaels and Mr. Perfect had been feuding since WrestleMania, WrestleMania 9 when Shawn Michaels confronted Mr. Perfect about his loss to Lex Luger. Perfect then had then cost Michaels the Ice Intercontinental title when he distracted him in a title match against Marty Jannetty. And Michaels had won the title back, but was putting it on the line against Mr. Perfect, but Michaels no, now had a very powerful ally in his corner, a seven-foot-tall bodyguard named Big Daddy Cool Diesel. And Michaels and Perfect had an excellent match out here, but it was Diesel who proved to be the difference maker, pulling Perfect out of the ring and throwing him into the steel steps for Michaels HBK to win by a countout. Now we get to the match um, that was... Um, that I already mentioned, the IRS man easily avenged his loss, the loss of his tag team partner earlier in the night, easily accounting the 1-2-3 kid. Next came one of the big matches of the night as Brett the Hitman Hart battled Jerry the King Lawler for the title of the undisputed king of the WWF. But Lawler came out with crutches, saying he had been injured in a car accident earlier that day, and that he... He'd arrange another opponent for Bret Hart, Doink the Clown. Hart and Doink the Clown had a passable match with Hart won by Sharpshooter. He then was jumped from behind by Jerry Lawler. This brought out WWE pres WWF President Jack Tunney to the ring, which told Lawler that he could receive a lifetime ban if he didn't wrestle Bret Hart. Hart then destroyed Lawler, winning with a sharpshooter, but Hart refused to let go, and the referee reversed his decision. So after the, all that, Jerry the King Lawler was named the Undisputed King of the WWE. This match was followed by a squash match as Ludwig Borda destroyed Marty Jannetty. And then The Undertaker finished off his long rivalry with Harvey Whippleman, which started in 1992 when The Undertaker defeated Whippleman's client Kamala at SummerSlam 1992 and continued when Harvey Whippleman Harvey Whippleman's latest monster, the giant Gonzalez, destroyed Undertaker at the Rumble and then again at WrestleMania with a decisive victory over Gonzalez here. Because Gonzalez turned on Harvey Whippleman, choke slamming him 
after um, this match and the match was, itself was not good at all. <coughs> Excuse me. Next was time for another six-man tag match as the Smoking Guns, Bart and Billy, and Tatanka teamed up to take on the Head Shrinkers, Samu and Fatu, and Bam Bam Bigelow with, Tama with Tana Tatanka beating Samu. Now that brings us to the main event with Yokozuna, flanked by James E. Cornette, or as he's known by now as Jim Cornette, and Mr. Fuji putting the WWF title on the line against Lex Luger, and it was all aboard the Lex Express. And Lex came out attacking, but Yokozuna took control. Lex came back through after he was able to avoid a bonsai drop and then a body slam. Yokozuna before, yep, yeah, then body slam Yokozuna before kicking out, kicking him out of the ring. Luger then attacked Jim Cornette and Mr. Fuji as Yokozuna was counted out. Luger won a fine match. Balloons fell from the ceiling. The heroes came out to congratulate him on his win. Yokozuna may have won the title, or retained the title, but Luger, had pro Luger, Luger proved that Yokozuna could be beaten. The only question was who could beat him and who and when that would happen. And um, that is SummerSlam 1993. Out of 10, I'm going to give this a 7. Best match of the night was probably... Um, miss, probably Mr. Perfect and Shawn Michaels. Worst match of the night was probably IRS Man and 123 Kid. That's SummerSlam 1993. Coming up next, 1994.